Hello everyone, this is A1C Nifty, otherwise known by my YouTube channel username, Draken255. So today, I believe I am going to make a tutorial for Caribou Space Program. What I am going to do is show you just how to cluster multiple engines onto a single fuel tank. Most people are unaware of this fact, and it's really unfortunate because it can be used very effectively. So note, one main sail engine can only go on one tank. It's too large to cluster anyway. And then here's one smaller engine. And you'll notice I'm using the T-45s rather than the T-30s because these have gimbling. And there's really no other way to control this craft other than gimbled engines. So without further ado, take a cubic octagonal strut, turn on symmetry, and I'm going a three, and I will explain to you why later. Place them on the bottom of the tank. Notice you have three. And put the engine on top of it. Now, of course, you can still stick one in the center if you manage to place your engines far enough apart. If you didn't, let me show you. See, well, let me because I didn't uh, place them far enough apart. So, there you have it. You have clustered engines. Now the reason I told you to stick three and no more no less is because less you crash. With these engines they're not powerful enough to lift this tank. More consumes too much fuel. It turns out that three is the magical number that consumes less fuel yet produces more thrust to reach the outer atmosphere and gives you spare for orbiting now you'll notice with the mainsail alone this thing lifts pretty fast not with these engines their true power kicks in in the outer atmosphere so I'm going to demonstrate their effectiveness right now and turn SAS on throttle to full and here we go For the sake of the video, I am going to speed it up once I get my map oriented. And I suppose I should have waited till daytime. Uh, yeah, that's kind of that a small peeve I have as far as um, other YouTubers doing Kerbal Space Program. They always do it at night, and lo and behold, I'm doing the exact same thing, so it's kind of retarded. Now it does get kind of shaky, that's because of the physics simulation screwing up with the warp speed that's okay though it's not going to affect our altitude too much although that is starting to scare me a little bit so I will calm it down and 12,000 at an altitude of 10,000 that's not too impressive at the moment but like I said these engines will surprise you they will kick out some power in that upper atmosphere I'm telling you And here's where it really starts to display that. And there's my space station over there. That isn't really a station yet. And look at that. Almost cl close to breaking the atmosphere. And atmosphere broken. And we're not even at the halfway mark to the apoapsis yet. There we go. But what's this? It just keeps on going. Why? Because I'm going to demonstrate the maximum altitude it can reach by running completely out of fuel. Look at this. It just broke 150k uh, orbit with my space station. And it keeps on going. There's 300k, 350k, 400k, and it quits. So let us separate there. Just take a moment to take this in. Look at that, 425k. Almost 425. 
that is incredible for those three small engines I didn't believe it either but yeah this is the effect that clustering can give you on a single orange tank just imagine what you did if you asparagus staged three engine clustered tanks over and over again in fact I might post a second video just to show you that so without further ado I'm going to take you to a small spreadsheet that I made testing out engines anything from one mainsail to one T45 to nine T45s and I'll show you the results and I will meet you right over there here in a quick second all right we are back and this is our Excel spreadsheet now I know it looks kind of daunting and all that but there's a lot of useful information here and I'm gonna help you bit by bit through it all so you can figure out just why three engines is the most efficient so first off our first section here is what we use to make up the spacecraft the reason I put this in here is just to show you what little amount of structural and other utility based components that I used to make this rocket and I made it so small because I wanted the results to be very non-dependent on what was on the rocket not too much drag not too much mass just pretty simple spacecraft and next you can see here we have the amount of fuel that was carried by the spacecraft and the amount that was burned up in each test like I said earlier I conducted these tests by draining all fuel from the tanks and going straight up to raise that apoapsis as high as I could and the next block shows our results so first up we have the mainsail one engine that's really all you can stick on there I don't think there's any way to cluster that total thrust 1500 with a final apoapsis of 189 kilometers now of course this is pretty decent this gives you a 120 kilometer orbit with some fuel to stabilize it and it took a minute and 10 seconds to burn up all that fuel to me that's pretty effing short I mean come on a minute and 10 seconds to burn up a jumbo tank that's not cool to me I mean if it gets you in orbit and you don't need to worry about fuel that's fine go ahead it's the simplest way to do it however I have decided to look for more efficient ways with clustering and that is why this spreadsheet exists in the first place so next I went one T45 and notice here it says crashed that is because one T45 is not enough to lift it and it just fell straight to the launch pad the same thing actually occurs with two clustered T45s it just crashes it's not as fast but it still crashes next we get into our magical number three and this is where the inexplicable happens we get a maximum final apo apoapsis apoapsis of 425 kilometers absolutely nuts and the reason I think this is is because it takes a whole three minutes and five seconds to burn all that fuel so while it may not be as powerful it is much more fuel efficient so while it has a bit of a trouble in the atmosphere when it starts getting out of it it can just do whatever it needs to and it's very efficient so it'll burn far less fuel to go further than one mainsail and that's why I really like this configuration next for testing because I thought the number would increase we have four on through nine and as you can see it just continues to go down four has 383 kilometers five has 298 kilometers six and on down for some strange reason it just keeps going down I believe the same reason is applied here because each engine just means it consumes more fuel you'll notice that the time to burn goes down so that means it consumes more fuel for the same amount of for only a little bit of extra thrust so I believe three is that magic number where the thrust to fuel consumption ratio is best suited for perfect fuel efficiency and that is why 
you should use three and no other. Now you'll notice along the side here I did have a few notes uh, for example the mainsail uh, this tells pretty much what happened during the test what I had to do to complete it for example the mainsail I ran the engine at maximum speed until it was almost overheated that bar almost filled up and then I run it as high as I could without causing overheating and then of course for the next two tests that crashed it just says engine did not create enough thrust to lift the rocket pretty easy stuff so yeah let me know what you guys think put some comments down in the section below and if you like this video if you like tutorials I will definitely try to make some more of them however please note that I am actually kind of new to Kerbal Space Program myself so once I feel like I can get some things into orbit and I can get some things docked together and rendezvoused and get to other planets I will definitely love to make videos concerning that if that is what you would like so thanks again please rate subscribe comment and all that fun junk that I don't necessarily need but it would be nice anyway and you guys have a good day or night wherever you are because I'm in South Korea woohoo goodbye everyone